So many people have been affected by the Ukraine-Russia war. I just want to explain personally uh, the experience I've had talking to people in Ukraine and why Devere and myself are going to be trying to make sure we raise money, particularly for people affected by the war. So I know people personally in there. Uh, we have an office in Ukraine and indeed in Russia. So just explain the situation. Just imagine that you wake up and you realize that the invasion's happening. Of course, for eight years, it seemed that it was threatened, but uh, everybody breathed didn't think that Putin would actually go to the stage of invading. And then, of course, all of a sudden you realize that suddenly you've got a choice. Do you go? Do you run for it? Do you quickly try and leave the country? And of course, some of my people did. Uh, but the guys that were working in the office, the Ukrainians, they had to join the army. So just remember that if you were between 16 and 60 as a male, you had no choice. So, you know, all of a sudden you've gone from being, from our point of view, trainee financial advisors to somebody giving you a gun and you are actually in the army. So think how terrifying that is when you're living in, and I'm particularly talking about Kiev now because it's personal experiences, and you're there and of course all of a sudden you're there to fight for your country and, and in some ways you're pleased to fight for your country but of course in a state of shock. And then I have friends there um, and uh, particularly one person in there that I know extremely well and she was there in the middle of Ukraine. So just imagine that she's worked hard hard to build up a career for herself, build up some property, and all of a sudden you've got these bombs coming in. You don't know if you're gonna be alive or if you're gonna be able to get out. She chose in this particular instance not to leave immediately. Why? Her mother was there and just was difficult to rush and leave everything behind. And maybe this war was fast, maybe it was over quickly, or maybe they could settle it. Maybe it wasn't really gonna happen. And in fact, many of us looked at it and thought that Russia would win this war quickly. And perhaps Perhaps it would be a bloodless, in, in other words, they would attack the army, but they wouldn't actually attack civilians. And of course, that was the hope in the beginning. Then all of a sudden you realize that not only are the bombs going off every night, so just imagine that you can't sleep because you're hearing the bombs and they just seem to be getting closer and closer. You're reading the news on Telegram. Of course, everybody wants to know the news if you're in, 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 in Kiev. You want to know what's happening. And obviously everything that you're reading is negative. You're hearing about civilians. Then you hear about your friend and this particular person, their best friend, uh, the Chechen soldiers uh, came into the house, they shot the dog, um, they warned the people that unless they stayed indoors and were prepared to do video interviews, then they would be shot, they would be dead, and that was this person's best friend. So the people coming closer to uh, Kiev, and of course the tanks were lining up, and as she said to me, you know, they're not coming to say hello, and you just imagine all those tanks, of course, they're coming to try and kill you. And just imagine being in an environment where you know that you're going to be attacked. But if you leave the country, then you end up with nothing. So one of her friends, uh, another friend had left and gone to Poland. And of course, once you leave, you're a refugee. So in effect, you've got a heart, but you really have no rights. You've left behind everything else. And in fact, in some countries, if you go to another country and then go back into Ukraine, you can't go back into that country again. Uh, why? Because they have to put rules in. They can't just be letting people become a refugee and go back in and then become a refugee. So they put rules in. So if you leave, that's it. But if you do leave, you leave with next to nothing. And of course, you have to try and start your life all over again. And you can be any age, but just imagine you've got a family. Okay, what do you do? If you're a guy, what do you do? You've, you've got to fight for your country. So you've got to fight to you send your wife and perhaps your children to another country where they're refugees. They've got no rights, nothing. Thing. They're in a situation where they've got to start all over again. You see older people that find it difficult uh, to travel. You know, what do you do? Do you run? Because if you run and if you hit the roads, then of course, again, you can be killed whilst you're traveling. And there were different stories of people with their children in cars and the parents being shot and the children in the cars. So there's so many stories that you've seen perhaps on the news and horror stories and you've seen perhaps a maternity war that, that was bombed and you see all sorts of situations but then just feel about this real life situation where uh, you're there and, and ultimately okay I persuaded this particular person uh, who by the way is stubborn um, to leave the country and said like look, look, you know you, if you stay it's dangerous if you leave it's dangerous I agree but this could be a long war I don't know how long it's going to go on for let's try and get you out and we, and we managed and just imagine six days yep six days 
experience of traveling just to get out of the country. And as you're driving, you're going past soldiers. As you're driving, you're going past tanks. You don't know who's gonna stop you. You don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, you got your mum with you, okay, and you're traveling, then you're traveling, and as you get to the border, even then you're concerned, will they let you across the border? You're sleeping rough as you go. And then of course, when you get to the other country, you gotta start all over again. Okay, so I, that's one particular story, but I think you can understand in, in real life particular situations for people. And of course, there's 2.8 million people that uh, we believe have left Ukraine. Maybe it's, it's, it's many more. And of course, the Polish people are affected as well. You know, fair pay to Poland, they, they've taken 1.8 million people that they've accepted into the country. It actually affects Poland as well, of course. And, and of course, there's more to come. So we're in a, a, a situation where so many people have left and those that are, are remain behind how are their lives now you know if you have three weeks of being bombed does that change your life potentially forever maybe it does so you know what can we do um different people have different attitudes mine is to try and raise some money and try and help people that are affected by the war uh, just i feel it's it's a massive 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 situation which is i never thought i'd see in my lifetime i must i must admit so i'm going to try and do my bit okay so what my dad always used to say to me and james will tell you the same thing my son okay my dad always said you gotta do your bit uh, so I'm going to try and do my bit. Please support me. Uh, if you can sponsor me, that's absolutely great. Whatever anybody sponsors me, I'm going to double. So if you put a pound in, okay, I'll double it and make it, all right, two pounds. So what I'm going to try and do is there's a half marathon coming up. It's actually up some hills and down some hills. It sounds, sound, doesn't sound great, but I know that I'm in a privileged position as the CEO of a large international IFA uh, because lots of people support me. So, okay, it gives me a chance to go out there and uh, give everybody and they can give me encouragement. Go for it. And then... We have a situation where we've actually got people on the ground. So rather than go via a charity, via a charity, we are going to give some money to charities. We've actually got people there. Uh, so we've already given medical supplies. So we've done that as a company. And we're going to be doing a whole lot more in real life situations. So no middleman. We're just going to be helping as many people as we can in the best way that we can just restart their lives. So it's certainly a tragic situation. Uh, do your bit. Give me uh, some backup and support. It's a super sad situation, but let's see what we can do to help as many people as we can. Thank you for watching.